All right, welcome to the vlog. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. Usually focus on one productivity app for video. So today we're focusing on Ellie. Today is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be more vlog style. I haven't done one of these in a while. I got a friend who's coming over and we're actually gonna go do like a little mini hackathon. So we're gonna get together, gonna go code something. You guys really like the behind the scenes process videos, which by the way, thank you guys so much for watching. Since you guys like that kind of content, I thought might as well just record what we're doing tonight. So my friend's actually down to work on a feature for Ellie with me. We're just gonna pick something, see how far we get, and then uh, just kind of document the process. Hopefully there will be some interesting things that come out of this video. So that's what we're going to do today. No, don't introduce me like this. This is Finny. What if I value my privacy? <laughs> okay, so this is Finny. He values his privacy, uh, but he's going to be helping me with this feature. So you'll see him in the video. He's a self-taught software engineer. He doesn't like to be on camera, so. Uh... Wait, how's the lighting here? Is it bad? Lighting's actually pretty good. Yeah. We gotta actually go pick something to work on. If you look at the feedback board, there's actually a lot of features that have been requested, like rituals, better notifications, multi-label tasks, an Android app. So there's a lot of things that are requested here, but I don't know if we can get through any of this, so we're probably gonna actually have to find something a little bit smaller to work on that'll fit in this time frame of just tonight. We're gonna go look at this list and try to figure out what to work on. Okay, so we looked at the feedback board and we did find one that was interesting and that's task attachments. Not many people have actually asked for this, but it's something that I think actually would be kind of cool to have in Ellie and something that I've wanted a couple times. So what we're thinking for the feature is users should be able to add attachments to their tasks. So we're talking like images, PDFs. Those are probably going to be the most common things that people attach to tasks. If I'm working on a bug or a feature, I'd love to attach a screenshot of the bug to the task. So that way I don't have to go back to my email to go find it. It doesn't seem too bad. So I think we can actually knock this one out today. First thing we're going to do is probably think through data structure, maybe some edge cases that might come up with this feature. We're just gonna go do some brainstorming right now. Okay, here's the whiteboard. This is the data model that we're thinking. Um, honestly, we didn't really even need the whiteboard looking at this. It's not that complicated. Right now we have a task in the database and I think we're just gonna have a new field called attachments. It's going to be an object where there's a key, which is just the ID of the attachment, which we'll probably just generate. A URL that actually points to the attachment itself. We're probably gonna host this on S3, which is just Amazon's cloud storage solution. We're probably gonna store when this was created and then the name of the file. Since this is just an object, it's gonna be sorted by when it was uploaded. So. You know something that's super obvious to us, but not to a lot of people? Wait, what? Uh, that we choose S3. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Not, not a lot of people would freaking even know what a P is S3. That's true, that's true, that's true. Ellie's using Firebase for the backend. We're using it for authentication, we're using it for the database, and we're lightly using Firebase storage, mainly just for profile pictures. I was debating using Firebase cloud storage for this, but the problem is it is extremely expensive, especially compared to something like Amazon S3, which is Amazon's cloud storage solution. We could go the easy route and just continue to use cloud storage, but I think if people are uploading images and videos videos and PDFs, this is going to get really expensive. So we're actually going to try something different. We're actually going to use an AWS service for the first time here. I don't actually know the pricing for Amazon S3, but I think it's like one third the cost of Firebase cloud storage. So very worth it in the long run if we use something like this. So that'll be a challenge because I've never really used Amazon S3 before. Finny's going to go ahead and try to mess with S3 and see how hard it is to work with this. I'm going to start working a little bit on the UI. I'll do a little bit of research on Mobbin, Dribble, get some inspiration, and then just try to like code out the UI of what this is going to look like. Since this is a small feature, we're just going to jump into it. Typically we do a little bit more planning than this, but we're just gonna go jump into it and see what happens. Yeah, we actually made a lot of progress. So we got the front end hooked up to S3. So now we can upload files. Finney decided to just use an NPM package called AWS S3. So this allows you to upload files directly to S3 from your React app. But what we didn't see was that the last update to it was like five years ago. So we probably shouldn't be using something like this. We're gonna have to find a new way to do this. We also have this basic front end right now. You can add an attachment. It's gonna upload to S3, again, using this deprecated library. And then we store the metadata, like the URL, the name directly on the task, and we display it on the task like this. Yeah, and then when you click the file name, it's gonna go directly to the URL. Something that doesn't seem right though is that basically anybody that has the URL can access it, which doesn't seem right to us. Um, I feel like there's a better way to do this. Even though this works, something just doesn't feel right about it. We're gonna do a little bit more research on S3 and figure out, is this the right way to do this? So it turns out the way we're using S3 was actually definitely not the way we should have been doing it. It was really insecure. So I thought it'd be worth explaining what we learned. So what we were trying to do was actually have our front end interact directly with S3. So we would upload 
upload a file, S3 would give us back a URL. So anytime a user wanted to access their file, they could just click that URL and it would download it. The problem with us storing URLs directly in Firebase was that if anyone has access to that URL, they can access the file. That means users outside of Ellie, as long as they have that URL, they can access that file, which is extremely insecure. So the right way to do it is not store the URLs, but instead store like a key. Then what we do is we take that key and then we send it to our backend. Backend will do all the verifications to figure out is the user authenticated? You know, what's the file they're trying to get? Do they have permission to access it? It will then communicate with S3 and generate what's called a signed URL, basically a temporary URL to access the file. And we have control over how long that URL lives. And we've defaulted for these URLs to live for about an hour. So when the user downloads a file, what's actually going on is they click download, our backend does a bunch of verification and gets a temporary one hour URL for the user to access that file. S3 sends it back to the backend and then the backend sends it back to the front end. And now the user has access. Um, um, and this is obviously so much better because we can control that security layer. The security really depends on that backend verification part. And so that's up to us to implement. So um, that's actually the proper way of doing it. And it's kind of a similar situation for uploading too. I'm gonna actually try to simplify this right now. I might be explaining this a little bit incorrectly. Um, when you upload a file, we're gonna send a request to our backend. The backend is gonna verify a bunch of things like can the user do this? Who's the user? Are they authenticated? The backend is gonna send the request to S3 and say, hey, users verified, can you give me a temporary URL, almost like a container for them to upload their file? S3 is gonna send this back to the backend and and the back end is gonna send it to the front end. So now the front end can upload the file into that temporary container that S3 provided. Container will then go directly to S3 and upload the file. So you can't even upload the file directly to S3. There's gonna be that intermediary layer with the back end. So that's how the downloading and uploading process works. So again, to recap, it's not just a front end to S3. I'm sure there's libraries to make that possible, but we're not doing that here. Instead, we're doing front end to back end to S3. And that's for both downloading and uploading. Honestly, it wasn't too bad to rewrite everything. It was just us wrapping our heads around this concept, which was the challenging part. So that's what we learned. Thought it'd be worth sharing with you guys made some changes to the data structure. So this is actually, I think, what the final data structure is gonna look like. We store a bunch of the things we talked about, but we added three new things. We have the thumbnail key. So this is going to be just for images or videos, like if we have a specific thumbnail we're gonna show. We're now storing the image type as well. So this is if we wanna display a custom icon that'll help us. And then we also store the file size. And so we realize that that's actually a really nice you know thing that we wanted to add. Wait, what'd you say? You know why we store the type? Why do we store the type? Because if it's an image, then we want to fetch the type. Ah, that's right. Okay, that'll be easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. So another reason that we're storing the type, because if it's an image, we'll then know to use thumbnail key. If it's a video, we'll know to do that. And if it's a PDF, probably won't. Yeah, actually, maybe we will do. Yeah, we Actually, we do, could do previews. We can do previews. custom behavior, depending on Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, yeah. So, but this is the new data structure. This is what we're storing. Um, hopefully, you guys can see that. Yeah, this is kind of what it looks like. And again, it's an array of attachments on the task. So that's what we got right now. Let me show you guys what the UI looks like so far. Made a lot of changes to make this a lot cleaner. So this is what it looks like. When you click it, we open up the full file. We're storing a thumbnail version and displaying that right here. So it's not the full resolution of this image. That's gonna save us a lot of bandwidth costs. So this is maybe like, I don't know, what do you think? Like 20% or less of the size of, of the actual image. So you can actually, if you go on S3. Does it say? Yeah, it shows you like the different size. And really? 99. 99.59%. The difference in file size. So basically what he's saying is the, the thumbnail version of the files is like 1%, less than 1% the size of the actual file, which is which is awesome. So basically um, this is just a compressed version. So it's a lot more lightweight and we can pull this up many, many times. Hopefully it doesn't make a dent in our server bill. And then for non-images, we're using this thing called React File Icon. It generates this nice little icon depending on what the file type is. For a PDF, this is what it looks like. Added this truncation so you you see these three dots whenever file is too large. Remove the date because we realize we don't really need that. And instead we opted to just show the file size. Also the download and the delete icon only shows on hover. So that makes the UI a little bit more clean. Okay, so let's say you're uploading a new file. This is also what this looks like. We added this new progress bar. Yeah, if you guys can see that it's actually showing the upload progress and then the file is done right there. That's what the UI looks like right now. Still a lot of stuff to clean up. I wanna figure this out. To get to this point, I went through Dribble, I went through Mobbin. I looked at a ton of different ways people do attachments, settled on this UI. She added this white border and a shadow around all the images. I don't know why, it just didn't look as clean when you can just see the images themselves there. So border and the shadow helps distinguish the images a little bit here. So downloading works, deletion does not work. So Finney's working on the deletion, which is gonna be pretty important. The other thing that needs to be worked on is um, the deletion of 
the task. If we delete this task, we need to make sure we delete all of these files that are associated. So whenever a user clicks delete, we gotta go and clean up all of the files here. Yeah, and we had two options here. We could either do that on the front end, so whenever you delete the task, we iterate through and delete all the attachments, but instead we're actually gonna use Firebase Cloud Functions for this. Cloud Functions have this feature called Firebase Triggers where you can actually have a function run anytime some sort of change happens to the database. The change we're gonna be listening for is a deletion change. So anytime a task is deleted, we're gonna run this function, which is just gonna clean up and delete all of the relevant attachments in S3. And the reason we're doing a function instead of just handling this on the front end is I don't have to code the cleanup multiple times on the front end. So when I bring this to the iOS version, the cleanup is gonna happen in the back end and I don't have to worry about it on the front end. So it'll just basically save some time. We do have to pay for these triggers, but I think it'll be pretty cheap. That's what he's working on right now. He's working on the task deletion and I'm just cleaning up the UI a bit. So we're making some good time. It's been about like three, four hours. Finny needs a break. You need a break, Finny? This was a feature that we thought would take us like 30 minutes to implement. Yeah, this was much harder. Yeah. Much, much, much harder than anticipated. I actually thought we'd get this done in like an hour, yeah. but no, no. Never this, on no. Yeah. yeah. This, but yeah, this let's took get a long some, time. Uh, let's get some pizza. Let's chill out a little bit. Yeah. It's been like three, four hours. We've been coding nonstop. So, gonna take a little break. Gonna go get some food. I actually think we're on track to release this thing tonight. So, super happy with the progress, but yeah, gonna go take a break right now. I just finished up the ability to delete attachments. You can go to a specific task, delete the attachment. It deletes it from the task and it deletes it from the S3 bucket. Uh, but one thing we needed to take care of was when you delete a task to make sure and clean up and delete all the attachments because we're gonna have a lot of unnecessary storage being used up in S3. We just deployed the Firebase function to do that cleanup anytime a task is deleted. This is a Firebase function trigger. You can set up these listeners anytime some change happens in your database. So in this case, we have a listener for whenever a task is deleted to then run this cleanup function. So now that's deployed, we're gonna go ahead and test that. Yeah, I don't know if it worked. <laughs> I don't think it worked. Wait, what? I'm not sure. I'm gonna find oh. out, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it worked. All right, yeah, let's see what Finney's doing. <laughs> I'm coding, I swear. This is how I get better at coding. Let's check the logs. Okay, we're gonna try again here. Files are still there, so it's still not working. Oh, attachments is not defined? There was another one line error. Uh, we wrote down attachments instead of attachment oh, in, one, in one place inside the for loop. All right, deployment number three. Hopefully this one works. Something interesting we found out about S3 is that there are, technically are folders, like you can go in here, create a folder, but apparently these aren't real. These are just path names. You can't really do certain things like deleting a folder. Like that's not a thing. You have to actually just go in and delete all the objects inside of this folder. So these things aren't real. That was something we learned because I was hoping that, you know, if we delete a task, we can just delete the, the folder. It's not a thing. We actually have to loop through, delete everything. That was just a fun edge case that we encountered. Nice. Okay, cool. It works. So now when you delete a task, it deletes all of the files. So we've uploaded these three files. We go to S3 and we have all of the files. The reason there's four files is because one of these is the thumbnail for this image. So now if I delete this, it takes a few seconds to actually delete it. Gives the users the chance to undo the deletion. It's a cool feature we added. So in theory, if we refresh, all the files are gone. So that's good. Looks like deletion works. Um, not everyone's gonna want this feature. Not everyone's gonna use it. So we actually decided to put it what's under called the power features. So this is my solution to make sure that the app stays simple, but also powerful for users who need these kind of power features. Anything that I feel like not everyone's gonna want goes under this power feature. So like due dates, task priority, these are all things that I don't know if everyone's necessarily gonna want. So they're off by default and then users can go in and turn them on. So decided to do the same thing for attachments. So right now it's on. So if you go to a task, you'll see it here. You'll see this section, but if you turn it off, you won't see it at all. Like you will have no idea this exists. It won't clutter your screen. The big con to doing something like this is discoverability. So these are features that some users might not even know exist, but I think it's worth it for the trade-off of making sure the UI stays simple. So I think we are actually finally done. It is 
midnight right now. That was probably like six to seven hours worth of work that we just did there. We did kind of mess around for two hours after like getting the pizza and everything. We're actually done with the feature, so I think we're just gonna sit on it for one day, really try to break it one more time. We thought it would just take like one to two hours, but there were so many different edge cases. Deletion was a lot harder. The way that you interact with S3 was a lot more complicated than we thought. Optimizing to use thumbnails, all of these little things kind of added up. This turned from like a two hour project to like a six, seven hour project. Got it over the finish line, so I think the web version's done. So by the time the video is uploaded, you can actually enable this feature in the power settings and try it for yourself. Hopefully this was a fun video. It's a little bit different format than I typically do. If you guys like this kind of content, definitely check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity app. And obviously if you like this video, subscribe and check out my other videos. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>